Former ISRO chief Madhavan Nair has stirred a political row following the successful launch of Aditya L1. Speaking to India today, Nair has slammed the Manmohan Singh government, uh, the, the Manmohan Singh-led UPA2 regime for not providing full support to ISRO at that point. He says that ISRO suffered big setbacks during the UPA2 regime affecting its growth. Nair, meanwhile, has hailed Prime Minister Modi's support to ISRO, saying that he had taken keen interest in India's space program, says that Modi had ISRO's, uh, in, ISRO's new initiative uh, there was keen interest taken and funds that were uh, uh, meted out to ISRO by the Modi government. This is what has helped ISRO scale new heights, is what Nair has said. Uh, to my last question about budgetary support and interest from governments, UPA to Modi, you had talked about it yesterday. What can you share with us, sir? Uh, then one thing, uh, I was the chairman of the Space Research Organization during mm. the UP1 regime. And Dr. Mangmohanji has given a fantastic support, both financially and uh, providing the guidance and oversight. And political support was uh, unsuggest. And yes. that way we were able to climb great heights during the UP1 time. But uh, for various reasons, UP2 time, the growth was not uh, that uh, substantial. And uh, perhaps uh, there was a small... Uh, setback also in several areas. Uh, but after Modi took over, he took a very personal interest in seeing that the space technology is uh, put to use for the development of the country. I still recall his uh, first Independent Day speech from West Coast. He has uh, spent a few minutes highlighting how space can benefit the society. Mm -hmm. And he, soon he followed up with the uh, meeting of Secretary and with the Space Department to implement the space application for the national level. To go back in history, uh, after Chandrayaan time, I, uh, Chandrayaan one time, I met Modi ji at Gujarat. And after then, uh, space technology and applications were available. And he very keenly listened to me, and he has given immediate command to see that the space application program in the state is uh, given full trust. Yeah. And within a month or so, uh, we have developed a teleconference facility and also the monitoring for agriculture and so on in Gujarat. In fact, he has followed the same spirit after he became PM also. Not only that he is giving full encouragement, but he is also given new initiatives like the Gaganyan program, uh, which will put us in the forefront of spacefaring nations. So that way the, uh, the present government is fully supportive. All right. Meanwhile, India's Nari Shakti continues to be at the helm of the space exploration mission. Meet the project director of ambitious mission Aditya L1 from Tamil Nadu, Nigar Shaji, hailing from a farming family. She's originally from Shengotai, Tamil Nadu. She's pursued her engineering degree at the Tirunelveli Government Engineering College. Nigar Shaji has joined the Indian Space Research Organization in 1987, marking the beginning of her space career, space research career. Now, after working for a little while there, she joined UR Rao's Satellite Center in Bengaluru, working in various positions there. She finally took charge as the Aditya L1 project director before joining in as the so before joining that solar mission. In fact, we also believe she's uh, been integral in designing the Indian remote sensing communication and interplanetary satellites in various capacities. Ma'am, firstly, congratulations to you and all the scientists at ISRO for Aditya L1 launch today. What is the mood in ISRO right now, ma'am? Yeah, it's a mood is very uh, jubilant because uh, following the success of our successful landing of Chandrayaan 3, we could uh, have the next bigger mission too. So the, everybody was very happy and we could uh, place the Aditya L1 in the intended orbit. Ma'am, what is the mission of this whole project? What what are we planning to achieve through this? Uh, are we looking at uh, the solar flaze that comes in and how does it affect our atmosphere? What more data can we get through this? Yeah, it's mainly for the study of all the major solar events. We have a uh, suit of seven instruments and uh, they will be uh, looking at uh, coronal mass ejection, solar flaze and uh, solar wind studies. And it's to have an understanding of all these major events and its influence on the space weather and also to have a good understanding of the coronal heating. So these are all the major objectives and we have in-situ particle measurement uh, uh, payloads too. So they will be measuring and uh, it will be can give a precursor
to space weather alerts ma'am this is the farthest that we have ever gone in terms of project that we have traveled 1.5 million kilometers away that we are putting uh, aditya l1 in uh, aditya l1 in that lag range uh, spot in l1 spot how difficult was this in the run up to the launch today ah it's a run up to the launch okay we have our regular uh, it's our work hours pslv and we have had our the a restart of the ps4 engine that we have already tried for, for the first time we are trying for the main uh, payload so that way it was quite challenging and we could achieve it and coming to the distance what you are talking we have gone still further to the mars mars is some 400 million kilometer correct the mangalyaan mission yes yeah mangalyaan mission so this is totally a different mission it's not uh, capturing it to the planet or like that it's an imaginary point which we like to uh, orbit around it and uh, it's a totally a different ball game uh, inserting and maintaining in the halo orbit ma'am one final question ma'am uh, the prime minister and everyone have been tweeting praising about the achievement that isro has uh, taken up today what next for isro and uh, how crucial will this aditya l1 data be not just for isro but across the global fraternity for space and space enthusiasts yeah this uh, because it's uh, as we you see every globally everyone our space assets are uh, largely uh, many fold it has increased now compared to the yesterday years and this will be a good uh, this will give uh, in addition to the global missions whatever we have similar to the sun studies we have by nasa is a uh, many missions so we can join with them and we have a holistic uh, space weather prediction we can help in getting a, a globally a better space weather prediction ma'am final question ma'am can you take us through the journey of aditya l1 from today to the l1 point that 125 days of journey how crucial would it be for having the exact maneuvers to be done yeah we have uh, uh, starting from tomorrow we have four earth maneuvers to uh, rise it and finally uh, we have a trans l1 injection that will uh, uh, with that we will be exiting from the earth's influence and then further for almost 3 uh, months 90 to 100 days we'll be traveling uh, along the influence of the sun and uh, after that we will have a maneuver to insert into the halo well final congratulations to and your team ma'am and a big big achievement that we are all smiling with pride today that what has happened with aditya l1 a final congratulations to you thank you thank you very much